Okay, so the question is fairly straightforward, but it does involve two perspectives. Just like we've looked at in language or in different subjects, there are two perspectives presented in the question. The first perspective I will represent in, I don't know, let's say red. So Stats Canada is going to give us one perspective of student choice related to baseball as a favorite sport. Faith, who I believe is an individual, because that I've heard that name used before to represent a person, and Faith in this statement is a girl. How do I know? Because it says her class. Notice how I'm identifying perspective in what I'm reading. So the same reading strategies you use apply to your math work here. So I've got one perspective from Stats Canada and one perspective from Faith's survey meaning I need to compare two pieces of information. What am I going to be comparing? Well, I need to know if baseball is more or less popular in Faith's class or in Canada. Which one believes that baseball is more important? Faith's class or Canada as a whole from Stats Canada? So what do I do with the given information? Well, let's try and interpret more given first. So I'm going to call SC... Stats Canada, and the given information from Stats Canada is that 22% of students like, or they choose baseball as their favorite. So that's a good thing. Faith survey shows that 25 students are in her class. And 12 of those students chose baseball. So what is the favorable outcome in the survey that Faith was looking for? What's the favorable outcome she's looking for? So who thinks baseball is their favorite? So the interesting dynamic in the problem is that they gave you the total number of students first. They did that deliberately to trick you because you may be tempted to put that into your numerator. Do you see the, the little change there they do, they've done in the, the creation of the question? So that means 25 is the total number of students, and 12 is the number of students that like baseball. That's given information. We haven't done any calculation or any comparison yet to see which one represents a, a greater population that enjoy baseball. Because in the question it says, is baseball more or less popular in face class compared to Canada? Well, first let's get a good idea of what Canada thinks about baseball. If you look in the bunny chart, I want to try and use the bunny chart to represent how many Canadians like baseball. So I'd like to change the color. And I'm going to say stats can is red. So we've got 22%. What do you know about percent related to a grid? How can we represent a grid, or the percent from the value, the number, into a grid? Boovin, what would you do? Um, I would convert the percent into a decimal. But we have a grid out of 100. Each square represents how much? Uh, one. One what? One percent. Okay, so if each square represents one percent, then what would you do with that grid to help you try and find out how to represent SC's percent? What does that mean, take them? Like, fill them in. That would, would be like 22. So you would fill them in. You mean like this? Yeah. And luckily, the bunny chart already has the squares colored, so we don't have to count them, really. We just go up to 22. So this area, the shaded area, represents the number of Canadians that like baseball. Does everybody agree with that? Okay, so if that's the case, we need to try and see whether or not face class believe that, or they like baseball even more. So I'm going to change the image, but still use a, a 10 by 10 grid. So we're still going to use 100 squares. Now, what was Faith's class choice again? 12 out of 25. So if Faith's class represents the number of students that love baseball or like baseball is 12 out of the total number of students 
How do we use that to represent it on a grid? 12 out of 25. There's a hint up on the screen. If you have 25, we need to do something in terms of making this into a percent. If we have 12 out of 25, how could money help you try and interpret the question, Sajid? Um, because it said 25 is, like, isn't it a part of the whole? Then you would have to turn that into 100 because it's easier to divide by 20 percent. What is the whole for percents? The percent. It's 100. Okay. How can you run a comparison with money or a metaphor with money? Yeah. Richa. Nice and loud. The coins are 25 cents, right? So one-fourth would be represented as like 25 over 100. We have, a de we have a denominator of 25. Right? So how can we transform our denominators into 100? Because then we can work as a percent. What can we do with the money? Like, what could you do with your quarters to try and represent what the process of transforming your fraction of 12 out of 25 into something out of 100? We can show, like, um, that we, like, the simplifying. So one quarter of the whole would have how many favorable outcomes? Mm -hmm. Or if you see one quarter of the whole of 100% of altogether, is that represented as the fraction on the bottom left? So if you were to do this, would that equal something out of 100? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. So does that mean we could write 12 onto each of these quarters and still get the same answer? Yes. So we've used the manipulative to try and solve the problem in a really weird way. But does it work? Yes. Can we try and solve it a different way to prove it? Okay, so first of all, what would the answer to this one be? How would we solve it using the algorithm shown on the bottom? Krishan? Well, since uh, we know that 25 is a quarter, means you need four quarters to make 100, which is part of the base 10 system for percentages. But when you add fractions, are you allowed to add the denominators? No. So how, could, how does this work? So you just have to add the numerators, so 12 times 4, 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12, is equal to 48. Yeah, but that's 48 out of 25. How is that the same as... Some 48 out of 100. To multiply the denominator, to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number, yeah. that is equivalent to the denominator and the hundred. So can we do this? Yes, we can still do it. Are you allowed to do this? I think, yeah. You're allowed to add... Fractions. As long as the denominators are the same. But does the denominator change when you finish the addition? No. The denominator is still 25. Your numerator is how much? 48. So does that work? No, it doesn't make any sense. Can't do that. But what about up here in the coins? Could we do that? There's four 25s in 100. In 100, and if each 25 was representative of, as having 12 favorable outcomes? So why didn't the addition work? Because it's written, the, there's, it's written in a specific way, and when we're according to the rules, when we multiply, uh, add fractions, uh, if the denominator is the same, then you don't have But why doesn't it work? Like, even when you, let's say we, we consider 12 in each one. So 12 favorable for every quarter of the 100. When we add those up, why, doesn't, why don't we get the correct answer? Why doesn't it work? Because we're not adding the denominator. But we're not allowed to add the denominator. Yeah. Does the, is the numerator right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, but the fraction's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But if we can multiply to get the answer, why can't we add to get the answer? Because in fractions, you, when you, you add, 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 add the same denominator. Is there not a way to add to find the same answer, though? Yes. Add. Is there not a way to add to find the same answer? German? Use a grid? All right, so let's go back to the grid. So 
Gurman, can you walk us through the first section? I'm going to change my color because I don't want to confuse this with Stats Canada. So why don't we go with um, this color? All right, so if we were to represent 12 out of 25, how would we do that with 100 grid? Because it's 100 squares. But how is that going to help us compare it to this one? Um, uh, 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 it will be um, uh, this if you, if you um, keep outlining, outlining every 25 squares and um, uh, coloring in every other 12 squares, um, uh, you can add up uh, all, of the, all of the squares that are colored in to, to find the, to find, um, uh, the number of the, 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 like, the numerator of the Everybody listening to German? Yes. All right, so let's try exactly what he said. So he said, section off the 100 grid into 25 squares. And then he said, represent your numerator just like it is. So you've got 12 of the 25. So here's 10, and then we need two more, right? And then the second one, we also need 10. doesn't matter which ones we shade in, and we need two more. Third one. Does that make sense? So if we count them all, but why did we have to repeat it four times? Because you're adding. Gersher. Because we did not. Because we're doing it on a hundreds chart, and and uh, the denominator goes into and the denominator goes into the hundreds chart four times. So you have to do the fraction four times. So if you were just to work with paper and and cutouts, you could do just what German said, and have a hundred grid cutout and actually recreate the, 20, the 12 out of 25, and then manipulate them or rotate them until they perfectly match up the 100 grid. Then it's just a matter of counting the number of shaded sections. Right? I know you can do this with an algorithm. I know you can find the equivalent fraction. But you can use area and shape manipulation to find the exact same answer without having to run an algorithm. Because I know you all know that 12 25ths, if you multiply that by a, f a factor of unity, um, 4 over 4, you get 12 times 4, which is 100, and you would get, or sorry, 25 times 4, which is 112 times 4, which is 48. Now, according to the algorithm, it's 48. According to the double check in the area, what are we looking at? 10, 20, 30. 40, count by twos, 2, 4, 6, 8. 48. So German's technique does work using this. Now, we have 48 squares shaded in. In order for us to answer the question, we have to go back here and check and compare it to the same, the same way that the numbers represented out of 100. It's like apples to apples instead of apples to squash. We're comparing the same number in the same form, percent to percent. So over here, we have 48 out of 100, and that's for faith. And that is, 48 out of 100 is in itself a percent, because any number divided by 100 is in the percent form, because percents are always 100 parts in the whole. SC, so Stats Canada found that 22% of Canadians love baseball. So in the question again, going back, it says, is baseball more or less popular in faith's class than in Canada? It's a definitive yes. It's more popular in face class. By how much? How would we find that out? Subtract, subtract what from what? Subtract. So we're subtracting the Stats Canada data from face class data. And we can subtract the percentages. It works the same. So 8 take away 2 is? And 4 take away 2 is? All right. So if 20, there's a 26% difference... Out of 100 people, how many people is that different that like baseball in face class on average? 
26 people, that's right. Make sense? Does this help? All right, I'll post it. Good work.